Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Business First Creatives Podcast. We've got another returning guest today, the amazing Ashley Pendergraft of Systems Over Stress. Now, she was on the podcast 18 months ago at the time of this recording. Guys, that's a long time. And I feel like she's running a completely new business than the first time that I talked to her. Ashley, good morning and welcome to the podcast. Hello. So excited to be back. I can't believe we've been friends for that long. Like we've been friends know, longer right? than that. I'm like, I've known you for years now. Yes. Isn't it exciting that we yeah. can say that? So guys, this is Airtable Ashley. <laughs> I know I've had quite a few Ashleys on my podcast that talk about Airtable, but this is Airtable Ashley. And we're finally going to actually talk about Airtable this time. If you would like to go back and listen to her original podcast episode, it was great. It was episode 12. And in that time, we talked about how she had put a complete pause in her business in order to like rethink her offers and what she was doing for other people. And today we're going to kind of talk about how she's taken that one step forward in what she believes is the most important pivot that you can make in your business related to your students and clients. Is that accurate, Ashley? I'd say so. That's yeah. Get prepared. The research is here. Pod <laughs> professional podcaster. Calling. I mean, you know, I, I do try. I will so, say too, there are so many systems at Airtable Ashley's now. Like we're all this like, I know. there's like the TV show Recess that used to be out and they, there was like the bullies. There was like a pack of five, but they were called the Ashley's and they're only, they're only all their first names had to be Ashley. It's like there's like systems Airtable Ashley's crew. And I think you've had all of us on. <laughs> I have. Um, Ashley Tyndall was recently on. So yes, I've had yeah. all of you guys on. So Ashley, first of all, Let's talk about why you have made the pivot to start focusing on helping people create measurable goals inside their business and what that means to you. Yeah, I think I, so I've been teaching people how to use Airtable for about like three and a half years mm -hmm. now. And something that I realized is that Airtable can do so much and it's, as a business owner, like we're taught to niche, I have found like beauty in niching. And so I used to teach Airtable for anybody, give me your spreadsheet, doesn't matter who you are, if you're an architect, I don't care, I'll turn it into Airtable. And slowly over time, I've, I've niched down further and further. Mm -hmm. And every time I do that, I ask myself, like, what is the one thing Airtable can do better than any anything else? I used to teach project management outside of Airtable, but like Asana and ClickUp, you know, those things are project management tools. So like I, that's not a hill I'm going to die on. But as I just continue to refine and get simpler and simpler in my group programs and my offerings, the thing that really it kept coming back was Airtable's ability to track your clients and track your client success. And so I know, you know, even onboarding, automated onboarding, offboarding, we've got Dubsado, we've got HoneyBook, some of those things can do that. But what Airtable still does above and beyond is track and measure your client results with the ability to, you know, track their engagement, track their forms, all of those things. And so as I started to think more and more about what is the true thing that if you have everything else handled in other tech, what is the one thing Airtable need, you need it for? And it was mm -hmm. tracking, tracking your client results. So we've been really focusing on getting people up and running with client results trackers and all of those things through both their group programs and their one-on-one -on -one clients. And it's been amazing to watch people's like growth and progress with that. So as an example, because I feel like some people might not have known what your program promise was originally, and then what your program promise is now. So can you tell me what it was before and what it is now, just to give us like a baseline of what you mean by really narrowing down what your program promise or your course promise is? Yes. So my group program is called Systems Over Stress. And before, which I've also like, to be fair, I've had like $40,000 launches with this program mm -hmm. promise. So like it existed. It was great, but there's always room to refine. Uh, it was like Systems Over Stress helps you automate every part of your group program in Airtable. Like yeah. ev every part. Um, every part. <laughs> Every part is a very big promise to make <laughs> and something that when I was looking into like, why, why does my program still feel hard for people? Like, why are people still not getting the results? Like I would, we all can look at that and like, see that there is growth, you know, for us to get our clients better results. And when I was sitting down, I was like, oh, I remember smart goals, which we can talk about, like mm -hmm. the specific measurable, actual results bound, like our results oriented and time bound or something. And when I was thinking about those smart goals and how I used to like plan my goals. That's not a goal. Like that's a bad goal. I'm going to, I'm going to manage everything in Airtable. 
okay? And then I also <laughs> didn't say like, it's a 12 month, pro- it was a six month program, but people didn't know, can they do it in six weeks? Does it going to take the entire six months? So it was ambiguous for them of how long it's going to take for them to complete it, which also caused extra f- frustration. Mm-hmm. So when I just saw like all of these like holes in the program promise, I was like, wow, we can refine this so much. And when I kind of ran it through almost like creating a smart goal for my students, I was really able to clean that up. So now instead of saying, we help you manage every aspect of your group program inside of Airtable, we now say Systems Over Stress helps you set up an automated onboarding, offboarding, and resign process within 30 days. So you can set up like three client results tracking systems to get your clients like double the results. Like lots of... Lots so specific, of Ashley. Bound, very yes. specific things. Because what will happen... Everything is a moving goalpost. <laughs> mm-hmm. manage, ev- manage everything in here. It's like, okay, if you add a new feature, then inherently not everything is now managed in Airtable. So really yeah. being able to run it through that. So when we did that for our own program, I got so much more clarity on like how to sell it, who, how to talk about it, how many emails, like the emails I could write because it was so much more specific. And I was like, okay, if this help was helpful for me, I bet it will be helpful for our, our clients to clean up their, their program promises as well. Yeah. So let's talk about that program promise because you just said how to automate onboarding, offboarding, and re-signing your clients within 30 days. So clearly there's an onboarding process that someone can check off yep. and an offboarding process that someone can check off and a re-signing process that someone can check off. And there's the time goal of 30 days where you either do those three things within 30 days or you don't, but at least then you get to say, of my students get through all three of these processes within 30 days. And of course, Airtable comes in to collect that data. So looking at what you've done with your own program, how do you think that someone should approach it if they're like you and they're like, okay, I don't know what, maybe they don't have a course promise at all, or maybe they have a course promise and it's just not specific enough. What advice would you give to someone who's looking to refine their own course promise before they can even set any of those measurable goals that we can start to track inside of Airtable? Yep, that's a great question because for me, almost all of us, I bet, if you look at your program, you're going to realize that there is too much inside of it (laughs) or it's not guided. And so what I looked at is we had, we said manage every part of your program, we included like launch tracking in that sales tracking in that we just like had a lot in there. So I had to really look at the program and say, what is the core result that like, what is the most important result? What is the one that people are asked, like, like are raving about the most? Like, what's the thing? What's the one thing that we can, we can pull out and market because what will happen to all of us is we put so much work and effort into creating these lessons. And we're like, well, wow, we don't want to strip this program of everything. Mm-hmm. You don't have to do that. And I think that's one of the biggest things to know is like when you're refining your offer, you don't have to throw everything away or start over. You just have to move things around accordingly. Yeah. And so for us, we have setting up your automated onboarding, offboarding, and resign. So we pulled we actually, we actually gated everything that wasn't that. So that's a good mm-hmm. kind of middle ground. If you're like, I don't want to get rid of this. Just say, this is the result that the program promises. Finish this part. And then you can open up to all of the other things that are in yeah. store for you. So you don't have to get rid of it, but you can gate it. So I think that's that's something that's important to kind of alleviate the pressure of having to redo your entire program. But really look at the program and see what's the one skill that you can teach people that can like guarantee a transformation, the transformation that everybody needs. For us, everybody had a group program, but not everybody launched. So it's like, okay, they, we don't, the launch hub isn't the thing then because some people are at Evergreen. So we were Mm -hmm. able to be like, have that as a bonus, you know, be able to make those things bonuses and really focusing what is like the one core result that you want to give people. And you can say, what's the thing that you're most excited to talk about in your marketing? What's the thing that you can easily get the most testimonials for? What's the thing your students love the most? Pick that thing and kind of just reorient, kind of like moving the Titanic, like change Mm -hmm. your messaging, change your marketing, (laughs) move things around in your course platform to really highlight that as the result. I mean, and I've never really thought about it as you giving them a stick, like you're gating everything else and you're saying, no, this is what I believe you need to do first. If you do these things, I will give you the other things. Yeah. It gives people a lot of motivation to do those core things, because I don't know if you were struggling with this in systems over stress, but I certainly struggle with this in my own program before I kind of revamped it. And that was sometimes people would skip around. 
And I made videos, Ashley. I sent emails that said, listen to me. The one thing that I need you to do is not skip. You yep. have to do module one. Even if you have been a Dubsado or a HoneyBook user for years, I need you to go through that module and make sure that everything is done. Might not take you as long as someone who's brand new, but you have to do it. And then I was like, you know, module two builds up, module three builds on module two and module four builds on module three. I'm like, once you get those four core modules done, I don't care what you do. You are free to do anything that's in the bonus module five. Yep. But if you skip, you will come ask me questions about why this doesn't make sense. And I will have to tell you that's because it was covered in a lesson in module two. Did you do module two? And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay, like. And, and that's the thing, because I, I never want to gate things for, I think it's kind of controversial. It's like, do you gate things or do you not gate things? Because like, there's mm-hmm. rebellious students. They're like, why are you telling me what I should, like, what I shouldn't, shouldn't do? I'm like, because I know it's going to get the better results. Because for us, <laughs> our gated content, it's called the Client Results Club. So that's after you set up your automated onboarding, operating, resign, you get how to set up a support ticketing system. Like you get to do the fun things. Those fun things are a little more advanced in Airtable. So it's actually, it's a lot helpful for me to see those trainings are better because they already have the foundational systems knowledge. Like you're talking about, like they know what a linked record field is by now because they've set up those things in the previous lessons. And if they just went to the the support ticketing system, which is way shinier and way cooler than like an automated onboarding, they're like, I don't know how to do this. Airtable is too complicated. Ashley's bad at teaching and like all, all of those things. So it's helpful to kind of have those foundational blocks and be really strategic Mm -hmm. about what you're gating and what you're not gating. I don't like the like weekly drip because I'm like, if you want to do this all on the weekend, that's fine, but you got to get all of it done before you get to unlock the rest of the fun stuff. Absolutely. So let's move on because I heard you say this on one of your podcast episodes, which by the way, if you guys are not listening to her podcast, it is linked in the show notes. It is amazing. Thank you. But when you talked about how you get the baseline for then what you can do to measure your students' progress going forward. That was like a big aha moment. So what is it that you recommend that everyone do in order to get baseline data on your students so that you can then measure their progress as they go through your program? Yes, so this is where Airtable comes into play and is like fantastic. So once you have your clear program promise for me, it was setting up your automated onboarding, offboarding, resign, you want to think about like, what do you want your case studies to look like at the end? And for us, you always need to know like before systems over stress, I was like this. Now I'm like this. <laughs> so you have to capture that before part. And you want to capture that before part when they're still kind of in that pain point, right? Because like, it's just more powerful than they're like, oh, I remember like the, it, will, it won't be as, it won't be as powerful if they, if you mm-hmm. capture it afterwards. So a lot of us have onboarding forms and a lot of us are like sleeping on the data that we have inside of our onboarding forms and they are not as strategic as they could be. We ask like, what's your Instagram handle? And what's your like mailing address in case I want to send you something? And we never send them anything. Like (laughs) it's just like, there's a lot of (laughs) richness that can be inside of your onboarding form and people love to fill out onboarding forms I've found. So I always recommend look at your onboarding form and make sure you're getting that baseline data to capture every before aspect of your program promise. So for us, it's literally saying, okay, on a scale of one to five, how automated is your onboarding? Mm-hmm. How automated is your offboarding? Do you have a resign? What is hard about that right now? Really asking those questions there. So you can one, get a sense of where they're at, but then when you have Airtable and all of your form data is in one central spot, you can see, okay, 70% of my people have a two out of five onboarding automated system. Mm. Then when they graduate, they have a five. So you get to start to really play and analyze that data when it's all in one central spot. And so that's like the best thing you can do. I have a whole podcast episode on like the five different ways you can audit your onboarding form. Mm -hmm. Uh, A very nerdy thing, which I think your, your people can handle is field types are really important for this. You don't want just big, long field type text where people can like type novels. You want to try to get things that are like single select or number or currency. So that way you can really play with those and and analyze that data in a really robust way. Uh, And guys, that episode is the one that I was referring to. It will be linked in the show notes. So the other thing that I really got from you, Ashley, was I listened to that episode and I was like, okay, I'm doing part of what she's saying, but I could do a much better job. So then I sat down and actually wrote down to get a baseline of like where my students are in their CRM journey, because everybody's like, oh, it's just, it's hard. Okay. But what's hard. Right. 
And exactly what have you tried to set up before you come into my program? Like that really helped me with my marketing messaging. So not just are you creating a baseline so that you can then measure your goals as your students work through the program, you now have language that they are all using before they come into your program to help you market that program. I don't think that I can emphasize enough the richness that you can get from these onboarding questionnaires besides, oh, what's your first and last name, Instagram handle, email, all of that. Like that is just so basic. I feel like everyone should just pause this recording and go look at your onboarding form, go listen to Ashley's podcast, and then come back and listen to the rest of this conversation. It's just, it's small (laughs) tweaks of, it's just small tweaks that can really change and impact your entire business and how you market and how you serve your clients. I think something that's interesting that I'm playing with now is that it's not only what they're telling you, but it's also what they're not telling you. For example, a lot of the people in my uh, group program, they are established group program founders, which what that means to me is that I'm not talking to the new group program founders. So I mm-hmm. could say this is just for group, established group program founders, or I can say, hmm, like, what's the messaging that would so I could get more of those type of people in here? I, yes. Clearly, I'm capturing the established people, because those established people understand the pain point of like, they understand automated on board. They're like, I want that people that are just starting they're not currently like worried about onboarding a couple of clients. So now my messaging for my next launch, by the way, when I, when I did change this messaging, I had a $75,000 launch, which was the biggest launch I'd ever had. So like a 40K launch was great. And the, the ambiguous program promise, but when I really narrowed it down, it just, it almost doubled, which was wild. But now it's like, okay, how can I message to the people that are, have one, not no clients yet. How can I tell them like Mm -hmm. tracking their client results is equally as important and the automated message might not totally land for them. So it's kind of figuring out how do I make it? So it's, it's really inclusive for everybody, regardless of what stage they're at without like diluting the program promise. Yeah. Because I feel like when you get those really newbie course creators, they're more worried about their marketing. They're more worried about actually bringing people into the program instead of what they're going to do when they get there, which of course you and I would totally agree. That's, that's not what they should be doing, but I do think that it helps them focus. And so like saying things like, you know, you're preparing yourself for your biggest launch initially, like Mm -hmm. you still need to put these things in place to make your life easier. So Let's talk about actually measuring the goals though, Ashley, because you know, that's why you're here. So we've talked about refining your onboarding form and we've talked about Airtable is really great at like keeping all this data together, but like, what are some kinds of things that we should have in place in order to measure our goals from our course program? Yes. So everybody should have an Airtable base that has a client list. So it has a list of all of your Mm -hmm. clients. So first name, last name, email, that's like their little client profile record. When, regardless of whether you're interested in automating your onboarding, offboarding or not, you need that. And then you'll have your onboarding form that is connected to that client record. So the next thing that you would need once you gather the baseline data is you need to track their progress throughout the program. So depending on your program promise, there's kind of two different results tracker forms that you can use. One is kind of like a rolling results tracker and one is just kind of one and done milestones. So I'll give you an example of both depending on what your program would be. My client, Gina, has a program called Six Figure Saver. She helps her clients save six figures. That is a rolling result that every time, literally, they move money into their savings account, they submit a form. And so what that looks like then is she literally has a form and there's an art to getting people, to creating a culture where people want to fill out this form. Her folks love to fill this out. She is always updating. Like She gets to see these rolling totals across all of her clients, which is amazing. But it's Ashley submits a form that she saved $600. That form is connected to her client profile and that's going to start to automatically sum it up. What Airtable can do as well with them is say, hey, Ashley, congrats on submitting the $600 savings win. As a reminder, you have submitted $20,000 so far. You have you know, $80,000 left to go. Keep going. Those numbers are getting automatically calculated and put into this email. So it's like, you're not just sending a, thanks for filling out the form, keep going. They are, you're tracking for them, which can be really helpful in giving them that momentum. So whether it's finances, weight, well, anything that's a numerical, that rolling results yeah. tracker is really important. The other way you can do it is, this is more for me, is our 
the milestones. So did you set up your onboarding? (laughs) Yes or no? Great. You filled that out. So you you fill it out three times. You fill it out when you complete your onboarding, your offboarding, and your resign. You could technically combine them into one. But basically, it's like, did you do this? Yes or no? So those are kind of the two different ways. But once you have that filled out and all that data is centralized, then you can see when did they join? When did they complete this form? What's the average amount of time between the, you know, completing the program promise to joining? You can just look at and analyze the data in a bunch of different ways. So it's literally, it's just a form and it's just getting people excited to fill out that form. But once you have all that data, it's just really incredible. But Airtable itself can help you remind people that they should fill out the forms. It can thank them when they fill out the form. And you know this about me. When I joined your program, I had no milestone forms in my, Mm -hmm. in my course at all. And I put them in. And then I noticed that one person completed my entire course in 24 hours. And I would have never known that she had done the entire course in 24 hours if she had not been filling out her module forms. And of course, that led to me knowing that she would make a great case study. I mean, it gave me the, oh my gosh, well, you can really get this course done in just like two days if you're really motivated, but really on average, it takes people 10 days. Or, you know, I also have a 30 day like lesson plan calendar that you can go on. But like, you don't know what your students are doing unless you ask them and you track it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's got to be both. Yeah. I saw somebody recently, she, she's promoting her course right now and they have different tracks, but she had like a retreat weekend, week weekend retreat track. And it was like, here's Mm -hmm. 10 hours of work that you could do over the course of two days. Here's the modules. And I just thought it was such a cool way to be like, oh, right. Our people do want to like, nerd out on a weekend or like do all of it in 24 hours. So even though you're telling them do it in 30 days, there's so many different ways people do it. I think something that we also do in our onboarding form is we give people the option to opt in or out of the timeframe. That's something that when people are are creating their program promise, they get really like squeamish of like, oh, well, like what if they don't do it in their 30 days? Because life happens and they're going to feel bad. That's fine. You don't have to like, it's not a bad thing if they don't finish it in that time frame. but you're just giving people kind of like an average milestone to work towards. And if they decide, you know, I'm taking this, I bought this program, but I'm going to do it in Q3 instead of Q1, mm-hmm. you can have them like opt out of kind of the time frame promise. So you can exclude them from that, but there's a lot of different ways that you can play mm-hmm. with that. Yeah. I mean, and that's not only helpful for them because it doesn't feel like you're shoving it down their throat. Like, hey, it's been 10 days and you haven't done anything in this course. But for yourself, if you know up front that these people have no interest in completing your course in 30 days, maybe they bought it because you launched it and they're going to wait the 60 days until they start. Maybe it would be more helpful for you to know that so that then when they do fill out the first, you know, course module form, whatever it is that it's called in your program, then you can start the clock then to see how long it takes them to go through the course. Whether you use that data in your average amount of time that it takes or not, it's good to know who comes in with the intention of trying to meet the the time data, or if they bought it with, you know, they didn't care how long it takes. They just wanted the information in the program. And that's something that I love about Airtable and its flexibility and capacity is like, you might not know the people listening, like how to build this, but just know like that you can build this and Airtable mm-hmm. is very exciting. And really like with these systems, any question you have about your program or about your clients can really be answered. And I think that that's very powerful. So getting so granular on like what type of person, if you're asking them in onboarding, are you full-time? Are you part-time? What type of people are completing the program in these certain time frames? You can really slice and and mix up the data in really in really interesting ways. So that's what I love about it is that you can really just get really granular in any question you want to ask about your program. You don't have to compile a ton of reports. You just get to like look at the data instead of like exporting CSVs and, you know, cross-referencing people and all of that. (laughs) I mean, that is the beauty of Airtable though, right? You set it up one time. Any question that you have, you can probably set up a process to get it answered by your students and then you never have to do it again. So if you're trying to figure out this one piece of data, once you set it up for one person, you can make it a view. And then anytime you want to see that data about any one of your other students, it's just there and it's waiting for you. And like you said, the automatic calculations, the average number of days, hours that it's taking someone to do something is automatically updated every time someone fills out a form, right? So you're not going in there with your calculator in order to write down every single person and kind of add it up. I mean, gosh, it's giving me the heebie-jeebies, especially with tax season around the corner. Yeah. 
And Coley mentioned, Coley mentioned this, but we just kind of like gloss over these things now because we're so used to them. But she mentioned, oh, if someone doesn't fill out the form, you can check in with them. Like if somebody mm-hmm. doesn't fill out your tracker form, there's internal Airtable automation. So you can say if it's been 30 days since the last time they f- filled out this form, send them an email checking in on, on them and like opening the door, door for some engagement. So I really love that that aspect too, especially as your group program goes grows, you're not going to be able to keep track of everybody's progress in your head. So if you know, these are the checkpoints I like to have. If someone is kind of ghosting the program, I want to send them a quick email. Like you don't have to remember to do that. Airtable will do it for you. And then when they respond, then you can follow up with them and have that like human to human conversation. But just those automated little engagement touch points are really great. And Airtable makes it so easy to do based on any type of little condition you want to they haven't filled out their onboarding form within seven days of joining. Like literally any touch point you want to have with them, Airtable can help you automate that first step. I mean, speaking of things that other people don't know, we live in Airtable. And so I don't really think about the things that are like really exciting for people to know. So Ashley, besides what we've already talked about, is there like one thing that people are always like, oh my God, Airtable will do that? Okay, sign me up. Like what? what's something that everyone gets excited about? Mm, that's a great question. I do. Everybody does get excited about the ability to send automated check in emails. Like honestly, that part where they just feel that and automated payment plan projections that yes. when I, when people see that they lose their <laughs> minds. So what that is, is we all have all those like spreadsheets of like, when you get a new payment plan, you kind of have the months at the top and the names at the bottom. And you're just like manually putting it so you can see your monthly recurring revenue, your MRR. I got rid of those spreadsheets like two years ago, have not looked back. Um, But what Airtable does is when you get your first payment come in, it will automatically create future projected payments based on, you know, 30 days out, depending on your payment plan structure. So you can see in real time, when you get a new student, you can go check out, we call it a sales hub. You can go check out your sales hub and you can see that your projected payments for the, for the next five months, six months, whatever. And it just gives you so much peace about what your revenue goals need to be of like, great. I've got 10K guaranteed coming in. How do I make up that deficit? You get to see that in real time automatically. People are always blown away that that's possible. I mean, I wasn't using it for the longest because I didn't have a payment plan in my course. And then when I created one, I was like, okay, Ashley, um, now I need this. Can you come do this for me, please? And thank you. So actually, let's talk about that. Because the first time that I had you on this podcast, you had shut down all of your individual (laughs) one-to-one work and you were all in on the group program and now you're like a full-blown agency again. So tell me about what it's like to kind of niche down to a course program and why you decided to like kind of come back out and offer one-to-one work again. Yes. So I did. So I used to do VIP days, learned from the best Jordan Gill, loved like VIP days absolutely changed my business. I have ADHD, so it was really helpful for me to like be all in with somebody and then hop out. But just there was going to always be a cap on my time with that. And I knew Mm -hmm. like I only wanted to work X amount of days. And I never really figured out exactly how to... Airtable work was very custom. So it was like, it. I always thought I could do it in a certain amount of time, but then it would like add a little bit more time. It just, it never felt like super clean to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so they always felt kind of custom and bespoke. And so I knew I needed to either totally rework that, which is something we've done now, or just go all in on my group program. And I just felt like an easier path to like ease with having the group program um, just with some of like, you know, when you have a couple of bad clients, you get a little burnt and you're like, do I need mm-hmm. this offer anymore? <laughs> so <laughs> I intentionally paused my group, my VIP days to focus on the group program. And I didn't want to split my time. So I was saying no to a lot of, a lot of VIP day work, a lot of one-on-one work. And I just focused on the group program and really worked on refining that. And that was beautiful. Uh, I hired a co-coach that helps me with that program, Katie May. She was awesome. And then one, one of our launches, one of my coaches said, Hey, a really great bonus would be if you guys set up the sales hub for somebody, yeah. like if you were able to do it. And so it was kind of meta. So it was, it was kind of couched. So if you bought the group program, we would do one-on-one work for you. And that was like a really, really popular bonus that I actually didn't deliver. My team member did. And that was like, I just accidentally become an agency, but I just saw the path to, I think as service providers, we have a belief that like no one can do it like us. 
and no one's going to want not like they want me. And when Katie Mae was able to like crank all those out, I really liked them. I was like, oh, I don't have to be the one to deliver these. Actually, right now, as I'm recording this podcast, Katie Mae is doing a VIP day for like she's doing the VIP day, $7,500 VIP day that mm-hmm. I am not doing. <laughs> like, I am now an agency. I'm doing this type of work while she is running those VIP days, which is, which is really cool. So that was kind of, that started last January. We did that. And so it's been a a year of, you know, opening myself up to agency world and VIP days and trusting that I have the systems and team in place to really deliver those in a way that can be good for me and my clients and my team members. And I mean, I personally think that it's a really awesome thing to do on the back end of a group program or a course, because you're getting people in. I don't want to say with the promise of DIY, but some people really do think they're going to jump into a group program and they have the best of intentions, but life gets in the way. They either don't have the capacity anymore, or they feel like their time is more valuable doing some other activity in their business? And can I just pay someone to take this off of my list? And that's why I think it's so great that you're offering this one-to-one service that could potentially be, you joined my group program, you haven't gotten your offboarding, onboarding, and re-signing done in 30 days. Can I help you check that off your list in my agency? And so I know that's not what you originally intended, but I do think that it's like a really great back-end offer for someone who's like, I want to see if I can do it first myself. And if I can't, I can still hire the expert who was teaching me how to do it to just do it for me. And I can go, you know, get a few additional clients to pay for it. Exactly. That's something we, so we now have a front end agency offer, which is a done for you sales hub setup. I've sent one email about it. So not a lot of people know about it yet, but literally Mm -hmm. it's because everybody, a sales hub is relatively straightforward to set up, but there is a little bit of maintenance if a zap breaks, like it's, it's sales data and it's numbers and we can do it in our sleep. And it takes people a few days to figure out and set up and make sure it's, it's working well. So we were like, Oh, this is a really easy, it's an easy thing for us to deliver on. It's easy thing for us to delegate. There's a right way or there's a wrong way to set it up. Like there's no ambiguity like there is with like group Mm -hmm. programs and all of that. And so we now are doing a three month service where it's just a thousand dollars a month for 3000, you get a sales hub that's completely set up custom to you and your checkout platform. But then also we maintain it and make sure that your reports are up to date and all of those things. Nice. Yeah. So that's really exciting. So if there's just, cause I, I get people who pay me $500 to sit in, sit in with them for an hour to troubleshoot their sales hubs, zaps that are breaking. And I'm like, damn, like there's an easy way for us to do this. Like, let us handle this part. Like, <laughs> just look at the reports. We'll just make sure that the automations are, are running correctly and everything like that. Um, so it's been helpful this year. I'm really stepping into owning the fact that these things are hard. Like, I, I there's a balance of like, it's easy. Anyone can set it up. It was like, no, it's a skill that I, it comes very easily to me and it's really hard for other people. And like, other things are hard for me that I'm like, please let me pay you to do it. I'm like, let me pay you, you to do this. What can you I, can what can pay I not me to yeah. do this for you? I don't need to convince you that it's easy just because it's easy for like, you can pay me to do the easy thing for me. That is hard for you. That's okay. So I'm like really trying to like step into that, that idea this year. <laughs> okay. I mean, Ashley, I feel like this was a really good follow-up to your previous podcast episode because I felt really guilty that we talked that whole time the first time and we didn't talk about really anything Airtable. But if someone listening to this is like, hey, I've got a group program, I would love to know more about Ashley's program and getting these things set up. Because guys, refining your course promise is a must. Like, I can't tell you how great it is to be able to do that and be able to say, yes, my students met this goal or no, they didn't. But Ashley, if people want to hear more about Systems Over Stress, where can they find you on the internet? Yeah. So Instagram is kind of the best little portal. That's just at systems over stress. You'll know like what my upcoming launches are, what's going on. Uh, And I've also been really into threads recently. I'm getting into threads, but you can, you know, you can go to Instagram and find threads. And then of course there's a link in bio. We have an email list, all those fun things. So that's definitely the best place. And then my podcast as well. I mean, you can absolutely, you do not need to pay any money to refine your program promise. It's like that part, Mm -hmm. you can like listen to a podcast episode, clean that up, look at your onboarding form. You can do all those things just from like the free resources that I have. But then when you're like, okay, let's start tracking this stuff. That's when like, that's when we can start to work together and really do some of that fun stuff. I mean, inside my program too, of course, we audit your program promise and we do all of that stuff, but there's so many 
free resources that you can just sit and nerd out and, and refine that. And then when you're ready to get tracking into the nitty gritty systems, then we can, we can play. I mean, and then Ashley can be your back pocket person where you're like, Ashley, I love you. Help me fix yeah. this. I, I, I've decided this is not a, not a hill I'll die on. All right, Ashley, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. Um, let's not make it 18 months again. Okay. Okay. I gotta, okay. You, yeah, we gotta do more on mine too. All right, everyone. That's it for this episode. See you next time.